Parents of Reddit, what is most ducked up secret you are hiding from your children? A sim the child but my dad waited till a sim grown up to tell me that my mom gave me a lot of sleeping pills when I was a little child. So she could leave me alone at home to maintain her relationship with her lover while my dad was working in another country. That cleared up many things. Edit. Thanks for everyone wishing me well. I really appreciate that. Is him doing well and it doesn't affected me beside that I don't remember much about my childhood. But I didn't suffer or whatever. Meanwhile is him dealing with depression and anxiety since a few years but is him not sure if this links to the drugging. But meanwhile is him pretty good at being depressed to be honest haha. Otherwise is my life really good. I want to clear up that is him in okay terms with my mom. She learned from her mistakes and I forgave her. I just don't forgive her that she did my dad so dirty. My dad is the greatest person I've ever known and he deserves to be happy. That were divorced. Years before they came along. Spouse and I decided it wasn't working out and got divorced. Years later. Things still weren't working out fantastically for both of us. So we got back together. Never did get around to getting remarried though. That I don't actually enjoy watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. My 2 year old would be devastated because that's our show. My parents told me my sister is adopted. They didn't tell her. She's 34. BTW help what do I do? I'm not the parent I'm the child. But my family kept it a secret that my brother was a child molester and that my grandpa had raped my mother and threatened to kill us grandkids. I found out because I told my sister that my brother had molested me and she told me about the rest. We were raised having a relationship with them like they were normal human beings. It's absolutely disgusting. My son's older half sister molested him and that's why we don't see them anymore. Waiting until we can get into a psych for support before we break it to him. Edit. He was 3 when it happened so was able to tell us, quite graphically, what was happening. The sister also admitted it and said she did it because it was funny and she liked to hurt him. DCP, Child Protective Services, became involved and investigated both families but couldn't find anything suspicious. We are telling him because we very strongly believe it is the right thing to do. We don't know what how much he remembers and would much prefer to give him the coping skills now instead of possibly letting him disintegrate into a non-functioning adult with massive problems. Thank you so much for all the support. It is a horrible thing to deal with but we are going to do everything in our power to love and support him. I am so sorry that so many of you had to go through similar situations. I am proud of every one of you for surviving and fighting. That we don't go to bed the same time as they do. That she can't have a relationship with her grandfather because he is a pedophile and I would never trust him. The rest of my family maintains a relationship with him and leans on me hard to open up communication because family comes first. They are absolutely right. My family does come first. Which is why my daughter won't ever have to have a relationship with him. Edit. He has molested raped multiple members of my family and I only found out when I was pregnant with my daughter. Without going into too much detail. He also has a mental illness and I've been told that I need to let him have a relationship with my daughter because he's sick and couldn't help it. My daughter knows that her grandparents are getting a divorce. She doesn't know that it's because grandpa, 72, decided to knock up a 23 year old. We will talk about it once she's older. But I don't want to normalize that relationship for a pre-adolescent. Edit. This is my father-in-law. He's definitely not rich. In fairly impressive shape for a dude pulling social security. And I am happily ignorant as to the status of his erections. It's a small town story with a ducked up single mom and an old man that hasn't experienced much emotional growth since being drafted for service in Vietnam. These people would never end up together if they were emotionally healthy and didn't have control issues. I am definitely going to do my best to explain to my daughter. But she's 9 and emotionally overwhelmed by the very idea of the divorce. When she comes to me to talk about it, having processed the idea, then I will explain the situation more fully. My husband has already told his dad that our family and his new family won't be getting together for a barbecue anytime in the foreseeable future. Edit 2. A lot of you dudes are assuming a lot about 23. I would remind you that we are talking about small town. Single mama. Daddy issues. Rural deep south. Grandpa ducking 23. 
Y'all are a bunch of optimists. Update first of all thank you again for all the many kind words and the show of support. My wife and daughter picked me up earlier this afternoon. We opted not to video the moment as it felt impersonal and we just wanted to truly enjoy each other's company as we soaked in the monumental occasion. I definitely cried more than my daughter did. Over the course of the day she became more and more excited and exclaimed I can't believe you are coming home it has been a fantastic day. Not really ducked up but still a big secret. I've been living 5, 1 stroke 2 hours away from my wife and daughter for the past 11 months. Every time I talk to my daughter she asks when am I coming home? Well little does she know that next Friday when her and her mom come for what she thinks is just a weekend visit they are actually coming to pick me up for good. Thanks everyone for all the kind words. To clarify a few things. My move was medically related. I got shot when I was 13 and this is in no way related to that. I am a social worker by trade but have not worked in the field these past 11 months due to my situation. I actually did an amour about it a few years ago. My wife and I did get divorced and yes we did co-parent. However recently we have decided that the truth is we should have worked harder on being together and are giving it another go. I call her my wife because I never really stopped thinking of her that way. I mentioned being shot because people were checking my post history and seeing that I had been shot but not that it was when I was 13. People were wondering if that is why I had been away. I want to thank everyone for the incredible show of support and compassion. For all of the kind words. I would especially like to thank those who shared their personal stories of similar circumstances. Thank you for the gold and everything else. Honestly I am unable to properly express how your words brightened my day and will continue to provide encouragement. I promise you all that I will post an update. I never actually took his nose. It stayed on his face the whole time. In fact, it has never once left his face. Even though I have told him that I took it countless times. I even showed him the tip of my thumb as evidence of the theft. Sorry you had to read that. But it feels really good to come clean. Edit. Thanks for all the responses, or some. I will tell him the truth eventually, but have to make sure mom is on board. 2. For those of you condemning me, your words weigh heavy, but honesty, much like a fire at the circus, is intense. That I got all these bedtime facts from Reddit. My son was a product of rape. He just thinks I had really low standards in men at one point. Adoptive parent of three kids two of which are biological siblings and cousins. Found out a year after the adoption that the biological parents were half siblings who shared the same dad. The bio parents found out after they had the first child and proceeded to have another. The kids are now 16 and 13 respectively and have zero clue that they are a product of incest. Unfortunately their biological grandpa just passed away, so there very well could be a big reveal coming in the near future. My 3 year old is an absolute miracle. Her birth mom, my wife's sister, didn't want her. Basically tried for an intentional miscarriage via massive drinking and drug use. Born 11 weeks premature, and with 5 different drugs in her system. She shouldn't even be alive by most medical estimations. Yet here she is. Slight developmental setbacks. But she is solidly inside the bell curve. Her socialization is on point, And she should start school on time. She will know none of this until she is in her teens. Most likely. I am so grateful for this impossible little person. Edit. Holy crap this blew up. Thanks for the gold and silver. Kind strangers. All firsts for me. Edit 2. To clarify. She will most likely know that she is adopted fairly early. As it will inevitably come up. A big ducked up secret will be the dire circumstances of her gestation and. Shockingly viable. Birth. All she will know is that her biological mother wasn't ready to give her the life she deserved. And we were. Genes don't make your family. Love does. She also has an older sibling. Way too old to conceivably be mine. So the concept of a loving non-biological parent won't be too far-fetched for her. Edit 3. More details filled in. My wife remembers better than me. I didn't actually meet her until our daughter was 2 years old. We'll also add that my wife's sister. While not involved in our little girl's life at all. Has been clean for a long while now and is doing quite well. A colleague of mine has a friend who heard from her 8 year daughter that she, the 8 year old, would die within a few years because of a terminal illness she got. 
I don't have kids but here's a family secret. My mom and I left the straightener on for two days while we took a family trip to Canada. It doesn't have an automatic off. We haven't told my dad. Edit. The house is fine. The counter was just really hot. This was like two years ago. Kind of the opposite. But. On my 18th birthday my father walked into my room with a bag of weed and a bunch of rolling papers and showed me the entire hidden portion of our house. Not on blueprints. Accessed through hidden door that he used to grow weed. I had gotten grounded for smoking weed several times by that point in my life. This was in Florida in the 90s. Posting here so when my kids are old enough to snoop they get a split second of excited expectation before they are greeted by my saying I do really enjoy having sex with their mother. My son was planned. But after separating from his father when my son was 8 months old and having basically nowhere to go no way to actually take care of us on our own. Many many times I thought about the possibility of dropping him off at the hospital and skipping town. I never did. And he is 8 now and we are very happy. My wife and I each have a child from a previous marriage. Both of our ex-spouses were abusive cheaters. Both children still adore and idolize their other parent and we just keep smiling and nodding. This probably isn't the type of thing OP was asking. But it is a secret that we will maintain for years. Edit. Thanks everyone for the replies and commiserative stories. Makes us feel better that we are not the only ones keeping things like this a secret. You have reached a checkpoint. R-A-W-W. Arsenex. r a p p a p r R-Uplifting News. r i bleach Edit. Thanks for the internet currency. Let's not push this so far up there otherwise it's not a checkpoint. Love you guys. Not a parent but my parents held this secret away from me for a long time. When I was 3-4. My dad volunteered at a baseball park to shuttle people back and forth on a golf cart. Well one night he didn't come home till really late and I went to high but stopped to see that he looked scared and distraught. He is normally a rough and tough kind of guy and has a big heart. So I asked him what was wrong. But he said nothing and that he was fine. I believed him and went to bed. I woke up the next morning to see that our cousin, who doubles as our babysitter, was at our house but neither of my parents were. I asked where they went and she said they went to the morning service of church and not the afternoon service. Again I believed her and never questioned any of it. Flash forward 10 years my mom told me what really happened. He was shuttling some guy back to the parking lot when the guy put a knife to my dad's neck. He then proceeded to take my dad behind a dumpster and raped him. So when he got home he waited for everyone to go to sleep and then tried to kill himself by overdosing on painkillers. My mom woke up in the middle of the night, realizing that he wasn't in bed. She found him in the bathroom on the floor motionless and called 911 where was sent to the hospital where was treated. He is thankfully still doing strong. I don't know where I would have been without him. Edit. First, thanks for my first silver kind stranger. Second, thank you all for the support. He is doing a hell of a lot better and is back to his former self. I make sure to cherish my memories with him a lot more like hunting and fishing. Again thanks y'all. Never expected this to blow up. Edit 2. Thanks for my first gold as well kind stranger. For those of you wondering. They never caught the rapist unfortunately. I don't know every detail as I didn't want to pressure my mom more as she was telling me the story. Pretty sure they know. But my second cousins are technically twins two years apart. Their parents did in vitro and two of the eggs were fertilized. They weren't ready for twins so they froze one of the eggs and had their second kid two years later. It's actually pretty cool. Edit. I wasn't super familiar with IVF when this happened and a lot of people are saying they aren't twins. Doesn't really matter to me if they are or aren't. I just thought it was cool when I was a kid. I was about 9 when the oldest was born. For anyone who's wondering, they're a boy and a girl. I don't want my son to know that he was an unwanted accident. Even during my pregnancy, I didn't want a child. I was still so young and had my whole career ahead of me. I wanted to travel the world, finish school, and advance myself in life to the fullest. After he was born, I had a hard time adjusting and it took me a long time to fall in love with motherhood. I didn't feel a connection to my son and felt like the worst mother in the world. Now, I can't stop looking at him or hugging him or crying over him. 
I'm finishing school and I got promoted at my job. I can have my life and still be a mother too. I only regret my feeling of not wanting my son. Because he means so much to me and there are no words to describe the deep love that I feel for him. Edit. Thank you everyone for your words of support and sharing your stories. I am crying as I read them and I am truly appreciative. I love my son very much that I can't wait to get home and hug him. I love watching him grow and I want to provide him the best life possible. It's hard to manage work and family home life. And I'm not perfect by any means. But I'm doing my best. Thank you again everyone. If any other parents want to talk, please don't hesitate to contact me. As to why I didn't choose abortion. Before he was born or conceived I was diagnosed with PCOS and had a slim chance of getting pregnant due to the state of my ovaries. I wanted a child but I didn't want one at that moment. We were not mentally, at least I felt that I wasn't ready for a child. I wanted a child later in my life. When we found out I was pregnant we considered abortion. I was scared of everything. Carrying the baby. Giving birth. Having the abortion. The guilt. The regret. A lot of emotions and thoughts went into this pregnancy. I decided to go through with the pregnancy. So it was my own fault for keeping him but I don't regret my decision. I had support and friends and family all around me during and after. I even had a friend who admitted she had felt the same way I did. After giving birth. I did again. I grew up knowing my mother didn't want me. I was reminded of it almost every day and it seriously messed me up. I do not want the same for my son. He is wanted. After reading a bunch of these. I feel pretty good that my most ducked up secret is that I eat most of their Halloween Easter parade candy when they are at school. The sheer volume of BDSM related toys hidden in our bedroom. There's also a 50 stroke 50 chance our eldest was conceived in a fetish club. Edit. Let's clear this up. I am a fetishist. More specifically a submissive and a masochist. Not a swinger. Since meeting my husband we have been sexually monogamous. Although I have engaged in fetish play with other people at clubs etc. After all the acid we did. We thought you kids would be flipper babies. I have a copy of Grand Theft Auto hidden behind some books on a shelf. Before I found out I was pregnant with my first child. I took a ton of pills. I think it's the closest I've ever come to suicide. I had always dealt with anxiety and depression. I feel like the extra hormones put me over the edge. I found out about a week later that I was pregnant. Surprise. I was terrified the entire pregnancy that something would be wrong with him. Luckily. He was completely healthy and is an incredibly smart child. I've never told anyone. I feel so guilty. Not a parent but a child. This last Christmas I found out that not only was my mom had already been previously married and divorced but my dad had a kid before he married my mom. So I have a half brother or sister that I have never met. The real kicker was I found it out from my new sister in law who had someone did some digging. Found out. Assumed that I must already know and brought it up out of the blue on Christmas Eve while we were baking cookies. We are so poor. They're little so they don't notice. But we struggle a lot to pay the rent and buy groceries. Edit Ray commenters who grew up poor. Thank you for your stories. It's nice to know that a lot of you were well into adulthood before realizing you had been poor. And I love the happy memories you have that actually were we had no money and the electricity got shut off. Edit Ray a bit of background. We had our kids kind of young. We were both in grad school. So we're in a weird spot because we both have fancy sounding degrees that your average person would assume turned into a well paying job. I am now a postdoc. And we are notoriously underpaid. Sometimes I think wow. I have a PhD. You'd think I'd be smart enough to work out how to get more money. But I moved the family internationally for this job. Which is another thing that would make you think we had everything sorted out. Edit Ray offers of help. I have always had difficulty asking for accepting help. And now is no exception. Thank you for your kind offers. It means a lot. I will talk to my husband and maybe take you up on that. When I was a teenager, I'm 22 now, I found out that when my mom had me my dad did not believe I was his kid. He even demanded a paternity test so he didn't have to pay child support on me because he really thought my mom had cheated on him during a business trip she went on. I don't know why but a paternity test was never done. 
or maybe it was and I've never been told, but it explained why I felt so distant with my dad for the first 10 years of my life. He always favored my older sister more when I was younger and called her daddy's little girl etc. I felt like he hated me and this explained why. Today he's the best dad ever. I don't know if something shifted or what but me and him are extremely close now and he loves me endlessly. He's been such a great dad especially when I was suicidal in high school and had really bad depression and anxiety. My mom's a little bit bipolar so I've always been in a toxic household. And he was the only one to come and pick me up and just be there for me. Edit. Also I look a lot like my dad. Even get asked if me and my sister are twins all the time. So I think the whole paternity thing was just in spite of an ugly divorce. Edit. Whoa. Thank you so much for the gold kind stranger. I genuinely had no idea my comment would get so much interaction. I felt like it was so minute in the sea of other comments. But it's honestly really reassuring to hear this isn't something I've experienced alone and to hear other people's stories. Thank you all now. I'm working out how to explain that the chicken we eat is the same as the kind of chickens that live on a farm. I'm the child, 48F. But my father told me my mother was dead all throughout my childhood and everyone in the family, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents, stepmother, supported the lie. Not because my mother was on drugs or abusive, or a criminal, or even a bad person. Just because I had a huge argument one night and she went to stay with a friend, without me, so he decided she would never be allowed to be in my life again, ever. He wrote her off. On my 18th birthday, she called our house and asked to speak with me. So, I found out the truth. My wife is not the biological mother of our twins. We did IVF and their biological mother was an egg donor from a country in South America. My wife carried them and gave birth to them, but has no biological connection. We'll tell them someday when they're older. It's a little bit strange, but one looks exactly like me at that age. And the other one looks very much like my brother. Edit. I can't believe that this blew up so big. My highest rated comment is about a family secret. Thanks to everyone for all the great advice about letting the cat out of the bag to our twins. Comments from people in this situation were especially helpful. Comments about the biological aspects were very helpful and educational. For anyone wondering. Our twins are 8.5 years old and my side of the family has known the truth from a time long before the procedure occurred. For whatever reason my wife decided to tell her family that she was the egg donor, I the sperm donor, and that we did IVF because we were older and needed medical help to get her preggers. I never understood why, but went along with it because it was what she wanted. I will broach the subject when my wife gets back in country from a long work trip. Thanks again to the people of Reddit for helping to open my eyes about the impact of waiting too long to tell our kids the truth. There's tuna in the fridge but no matter how much he meows he can't have it because I know he'll just sniff it and meow for something else. That I've been changing every clock in the house on New Year's Eve to 3 hours early. At 9pm we celebrate the new year. Then hang out for an hour. He thinks he breaking every rule and has a great time. Now that he's turning 11 this will never happen again. With phones and being somewhat smarter. Lol. I'm the child of a parent that hid something horrible until I was 27. One day when my parents has a domestic dispute. My dad called me just to get back at my mom. He said. Do you want to know something about your whore mother? She slept with over 30 guys during our first 2 years of marriage. I just sat down and started stuttering. He said you know how people have always said you look different than the rest of the kids? I said, yeah, that's because I'm not your dad. Your mom slept with my best friend and you were conceived. Another thing, your brother, the one just younger than Mesa I'm the oldest, belongs to my brother. My mom just bawled in the background without denying it. I just laughed. And then I went into 2 years of therapy. Edit. One word younger from you get misspelling. Grandpa's not their grandpa. I didn't find out until I was 30 that my dad adopted me and my mom was married to someone else when I was born. My 15 year old was looking at those DNA kits in the store. I wonder what surprises it would find. Oh. More than you think. Sweetie. I'll tell them someday. Just not where what the right time is. Then again. 
That's what my parents told me when I asked why they never told me about bio dad until he reached out to me and blew their secret. My daughter was conceived at work, on airport property, in the back of a ducking Ford Focus, while we were waiting for a med flight to land. She knows nothing about this but tells me she wants to be a pilot when she grows up. I'm hiding a lot of things I used to be a stripper for 10 years, growing up in an abusive house. I partied hard and used to be part of Nick and Montreal club scene. That I was kidnapped and taken to another country. There's a lot of things. Now I'm just a boring accountant mom to everyone. No one has any clue what I've been through. Crazy what your kids don't know about.